first country we're going to is Austria. And this is one of the most famous Austrians. Hitler was born in Austria, but I didn't think it would be a problem. Um, Austria. Most of the wine in Austria grows on the East Coast. The, the reason for that is the whole western part of the country is the Alps, so it's not you're not able to grow grapes there. As you can witness, this is the von Trapp family going over the mountains into. <laughs> But if I can digress for one minute, that's not how they escaped Austria. They actually got on a train, went to Italy. This was before World War II, and they got on a cruise liner and went to America, but they figured that wouldn't make a good play or movie or anything like that. But anywho, um, so most of the grapes in Austria grow on the East Coast. Um, most of their wine, about 65% of their wine production is white. Their number one uh, wine they produce is the wine we're having tonight, a Gruner Weltliner. Um, they make another wine called Walsh Riesling. It's at, at an absolutely nothing like regular Riesling. It's got high acidity. It it's got green apple and citrus flavors. Um, they make a lot of Riesling. Most of it's drier than the Riesling that we're used to drinking. Uh, like if you drink a lot of Chateau Saint Michel and that sort of thing, they make a lot of Pinot Blanc. They call it Weeburgunder. They throw a lot of Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Muscat Blanc. They make a lot of rosé. Any of the red wines that you can get from Austria, you can probably get in a rosé version. But their most famous rosé is a wine called Schiller. It's highly aromatic. It's got strawberry flavors. And it's grown, interesting enough, in this little pink area here is where they make that rosé there. And then you have a lot of light-bodied red wines. You have St. Laurent. They make a lot of Pinot Noir. And they make Zweigalt. Zweigalt is a wine we're going to taste next month at the uh, Wines of the World, the sequel. We're going to have a Zweigalt. Very light, very tasty wine. And they also make uh, some bold red wines. And if you've ever had a Blau Frankish, it's a bold red wine. They grow a lot of Blau Frankish. Anybody that's ever been tasting wine in the Finger Lakes? And I know a few of you have. Um, that's a wine that they grow a lot of in upstate New York. Uh, so a lot of the wineries up there call it Blau Frankish, and a lot of other ones call it Lemberger. So uh, if you go up there, it's actually an Austrian varietal that they grow in upstate New York around the F Finger Lakes area and that sort of thing. So those are all some, uh, you know, famous Austrian wines. Gasper. In terms of Gruner. Gasper. Yes, sir. They also make a great Blau Frankish here in New Jersey at Benedici Vineyards up in the oh, northern well, uh, corner. Yeah, I've never tasted wine in New Jersey. Yeah, you should sometime. <laughs> Come visit. I was going to go, but the governor closed the bridge, so I couldn't get over. Sorry, it's my bad attempt at humor. I don't do politics. Okay. Gruner Ventliner. It's the most widely planted uh, grape variety in Austria. They can range from light and fresh to really full-bodied and concentrated. They're mostly fermented in stainless steel, but they use some new and used oak. And what that'll do is that add a little vanilla and a little creaminess to the wine. Um, you get citrus, stone fruit, white pe uh, pepper if it's a young wine. And as it gets older, it develops a lot of honey and toast flavors. In terms of quality levels for Austrian wines, if you see something labeled land wine, it's typically low alcohol, it's made in bulk, it's a lot of table wine that people like to chill and kill. Um, if it's labeled quality wine, it has to follow some basic quality standards. It's a step up from the land wine. And if it's a DAC, it's a, it's a controlled area, it's a sub-regional quality wine. That's what we're gonna have tonight. It's made in a style defined by the subregion. Well, they'll tell you what grapes you can plant, uh, you know, if you can irrigate or not, um, what your yield is. They'll put a lot of control on it so that if you ever get a wine from that particular area, you can have some confidence of what it's going to taste like and what the quality is going to be. 
Um, the area, this, this comes from the Weinviertel area outside of, uh, of Vienna. Uh, they call it, you know, Vienna is sort of Wien. This is, comes from north, northeast Austria is where the wine, uh, at least that I'm having tonight, is grown. It's a cool climate. It averages around 49 degrees throughout the year. It's got gravel and sandy soils combined with cool temperatures to create really fruity wines with minerality. And it's got a little bit of white pepper taste to it. Lower temperatures also produce wines with lower alcohol. The reason for that is uh, if a grape ripens, it has more sugar. When you put the yeast in the grape juice, it produces more alcohol. So if you're cooler, area wines generally don't have as much alcohol because they don't have as much sugar to convert to alcohol. Uh, and the vineyards are planted at, you know, at some 